Hi everyone, Andre from ChromaFix Films here to talk about the process of setting up a sampler for your digital audio workstations. I'll be working with one of the most popular ones today, uh, Contact 5. If you don't know what Contact 5 is, it's a sampler developed by Native Instruments. Uh, a sampler is used to run your plugins in your music editing software. Contact 5 costs $3.99 in US currency and your regional equivalent, but Native Instruments released a free version which is all you need for a large selection of libraries. I will be showing you how to set up the free version called Contact 5 Player, which it's the same process as the full version. So the first thing you want to do is go to the Native Instruments site, which I have opened up here. And this is what it looks like. You have the Contact 5 Player, which is fortunately free. So you can download it by pressing the free download up here, and then you can download the uh, PC version or the free sound library, which they have here. This is in case uh, you just want to have a starting kit for your sampler. But um, I do not need that on my computer because I have uh, my own libraries that I have purchased before. But if you're just starting out, this it does sound nice. There are some really authentic sounding instruments in here and uh, you could definitely benefit from this. But I'm going to click the free download button here. And you just put in your email and your country. Uh, just where you hear about this project. Just answer a couple of these questions. You download it here. Uh, you send this in and then they email to your email a code which allows you to download it. And once you download it, you have to install it. Now, this is the most important part. Because when you are installing it, you have to be careful of where you're installing it. Because if you install it in the wrong area, Things can get uh, glitchy down the road and you'll run into many problems and you'll just have to reinstall the whole thing. So make sure you get this part right. So the first thing I had to do here was in my main disk, which I'm using disk D, uh, we'll probably have a different name for your disk, but this is my main drive uh, and I made a folder called Native Instruments. So in that Native Instruments folder is where I installed Contact 5. Now you will only see a folder here uh, all it has is the, docu the uh, documentation and the Contact 5 application. Now this is not where everything is actually saved. The, it, the software, when you install it, it actually saves um, in multiple areas, usually on your C drive, and uh, if you actually go to um, your C, you will, you will see certain folders that it creates there that you can't actually change even if you wanted to. Uh, but there are a couple that you can when you're saving the location of where you want to install. Uh, it gives you an option, but I would not recommend changing that because it, if unless you're very careful, you, it will create uh, many issues when trying to run plugins. So I'm going to scroll up here, and I also have Sonar, which is developed by Cakewalk. Uh, so I made a folder in there which holds uh, all of my VS VSTs. So if we open up Cakewalk, I have this uh, folder here called VST, and if I load this up, VST plugins, it will tell you that you should name it this. Please name it uh, exactly the way they tell you to name it because it helps the software recognize it. And here's where I have my uh, libraries and plugins. Now, I do uh, have a library. The main one that I use is by CineSamples, and that would be the CineStrings. So that is, that is basically the same as the free one that you can download, and you have to install those as well. But the way that the computer will see it, it's so it doesn't have to search through your whole computer, you have to tell it where to search and what folder to look in. And generally, you want it to look in the same folder all the time for all your software, because it's a lot easier for the computer to track, and you don't want to be looking in, in multiple folders, because sometimes it can get confused. So it's better to just have it all in one place, and that would be under this VST plugins. But in the software, you can uh, select where you want the computer to search for it. So I'm going to load up Mixcraft here, and I'm using Mixcraft 6. This works, uh, the, the process of installing works very similar in Sonar or uh, industry standard software that they have out there. Um, I've used Cubase, Sonar, Mixcraft, and I believe there's a couple others. but. Mixcraft has been working just great for me, except for the fact that Mixcraft is only a 32-bit uh, software right now. They do not have a 64-bit version, which does cause a lot of problems when you are running a sampler 
that is 64-bit. Uh, you could have major memory issues there. Even doesn't matter how you know how fast your computer is, but 32-bit can only use a certain amount of RAM. But going back to the plugins, I'm going to open up the preferences here, and if you go down to the plugins tab here, you'll see it says edit VST slash VSTI folders and then rescan. I'm going to press edit. And if I actually load up right now, yes, there should not be anything here. This is an odd glitch I've been having, but this is because I'm not running in the uh, administrator mode, which I'm actually going to reload the software, but I'm going to launch it in administrator mode. So here we go. Okay, so if I go back to the folder, you will see that they are there. Ta-da! Now, Cakewalk VST, this is that folder that I showed you earlier that has the VST plugins folder underneath it. That is where it's searching for all the plugins. You want that. You want it to be looking in the same area. So I'm going to load up uh, a virtual instrument track, open this up, and I'm going to select the VSTi instruments tab. And let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see. These are all my instrument presets and my plugins. So as you see there, contact five should show up. If you installed it correctly, it will pop up here in this list. And I can open it up by pressing the edit key under the details window. And you can open it up by pressing this show details. So edit and it should load. There you go. And I have the CineStrings core here, but uh, you will probably have different libraries. And then you just load up there. You can select it and then Mixcraft will allow you to record using it. And this process works the same, like I said, for Sonar and Cubase, just different softwares are built to do slightly different tasks. Uh, Mixcraft is not an industry standard. And like I said, the problem, biggest problem is that it is only 32 bit. I have contacted Acoustica and they have told me that Mixcraft 7 will have a 64 bit version, but they're not planning on releasing that for a long time. But that is it guys. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. And if you were having any, any problems with your installation, just also feel free to ask me and I'll try to uh, work out the solution as well as I can. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.